Today I'm making two really fun mead recipes using monkey pod blossom honey. Let's get started. So the base honey for this mead is monkey pod blossom. It's a really interesting varietal of honey that features a soft vanilla and lemon note to it. After I got this honey, I really wanted to make it into a traditional to get the base flavor of it. I also wanted to see what other flavor combinations might work, and I started researching that. After a little time looking at the flavor bible, I found out that mango might work pretty well with this honey. I'd also just bought some canned mango and really wanted to play with that, so I developed these two recipes you see on screen, and I started mixing up the base for each. I chose the Lauvin 71B for the traditional because it's a pretty clean fermenter and should get some really interesting notes out of this honey itself. I also used Fermaid O in the traditional and the mango version to give these as much yeast nutrient as possible. The traditional was as easy as mixing the honey, water, and yeast together. I added the Fermaid O at my 24 hour mark and then let it start fermenting. For the mango version, I ended up using the Lauvin QA23. I used this yeast because it's great with tropical fruits and I figured it'd be really good for this mango brew. I mixed together the honey, water, yeast, and canned mango in the primary. I added my Fermaid O at the 24 hour mark and then I let it all start fermenting. The starting gravity for the traditional was 1.080, and the starting gravity for the mango version was 1.074. Both of these took about two to three weeks to ferment, and then I let them set for another week to let everything flocculate at the bottom. I racked them both into new containers and did a quick tasting of each. I noted that they were both a little yeasty, but had a nice base honey character. The mango version wasn't very mango forward, and I wanted to fix that, so I'll explain that in a moment. I went ahead and stabilized both of these brews with potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite so I could safely back sweeten with honey. During my tasting, I noted that these would both really benefit from some oak flavor. I ended up adding one ounce of whiskey barrel chips to the mango version for seven days. I also added one half ounce of whiskey barrel chips to the traditional for five days. This was a short amount of time on these oaks, but I believe it imparted and complemented each brew well. Now we want to make both of these a little sweeter, so I went ahead and back sweetened both of them. We added eight ounces of monkey pod blossom to the traditional to bring up the final gravity to 1.012. We also added one pound of monkey pod blossom to the mango version. My fix to bring back more of the mango flavor was to use a mango juice. I couldn't find juice, but I did find this nectar that I think would do the trick. I added about eight ounces of that mango nectar with the honey I had previously added and I believe it really helped this brew come together. The final gravity for the mango mead is 1.008. So I ended up clearing both of these using Chitosan and Kisasol, which comes in a dual fine packet. You can use this to quickly clear your brews or just thyme, or you can use Sparkaloid or any other alternative brew clearing solutions. These meads are about four months old at this point, which is not a lot of time, but I do believe they're ready to taste and ready to go. So let's hop into the tasting. All right, here we are for the tasting. This is the traditional on my right side, and on my left is the mango. And uh, as you saw, the mango was kind of an adaptation over time. It started off with one idea, being that canned mango, and turned into the kind of uh, mango nectar side so whole different process again those recipes I'll, I'll show them up on screen again but super excited to taste these i've actually not gonna lie to you i've already tasted this mango one uh, multiple times today so this is a uh, tasting number well, four it's because i was bottling some of it today you can see they're pretty dang clear the abvs are approximately like nine point something ish on the mango and ten and a half ish on the um, traditional so let's go ahead and open them up and pour them and get to tasting okay here we are both of them as you just saw we poured them they're pretty close to the same color the uh, traditional is maybe a little lighter and the mango is a little darker maybe a little hazier so that could play into some coloring as well but uh, i'm very curious to see what these taste like First, we have to get an aroma check. Aroma checks are important just for the total um, package of the brew. 
Generally speaking, you want the nose of the brew to be similar to the taste of the brew. Sometimes it's polar opposite. It's one way and then another, and it's kind of jarring. We're hopeful that this is gonna be on par with each other. So let's go ahead and go with the traditional because it's a simple start for this. Oh man, all, I will say all these tr uh, tropical honeys have a very similar fruitiness to them. This one definitely has that tropical-y fruit nose in there. I mean, it is it's juicy. It's really weird because you think like uh, if you were to go and get some fruit juice, some uh, passion fruit juice or something that's tropical-y and smell it or taste it, you get that just straight up kind of sugary aroma. This has that right there. It's a beautiful nose though. I love that. I wonder if we have any essence retained in the mango. A little bit of it is there, but it's very, um, I'll say distracted by the other mangoes. I'm gonna use mangoes plural here <laughs> that we use because that mango flavor is prominent, which was what we want in a mango brew. So yeah, that's really not bad. At the point of this tasting, we're setting somewhere around three to four months. And I know some of you are already going, well, there's no way that this is gonna be good at this point. Part of my tasting experience here is to see the progression of it. Obviously these will get better with a little bit of time, but there's no law that says these can't be pretty dang good as it stands. So that's important. I say we start with the traditional tasting because you gotta have the base. So here we go. Man, that's lovely. The, the um, oak we used in here is a nice rounding, really just kind of packages up in a, a barrel kind of way what the what's happening here with the honey. There's like a, a little bit of a, not, not gonna say caramel, maybe a little caramely kind of slightly nutty undertone on top of this very, um, you know, tropical fruity vibe. That is excellent. And I am, I'm bummed that I don't have more of this because I think giving this to a competition would uh, it'd do pretty well. And I will note, you know, we're, like I said, three, four months old-ish, 10 and a half percent. It's got a little bit of booziness. There's that perceived, ooh, this has some alcohol content to it. And that's okay. You know, that's part of brewing. That's part of the progression. There's a bell curve that we're riding right now. And we're kind of, you know, if, if the bell curve, curve peaks up here, we're kind of probably about right here right now. So we've got a little ways to go three months, four months from now, it might be even better. But at this current point, the flavor melding is really nice. I think once everything kind of tempers down and alcohol content kind of relaxes, so to speak, it will be even better. This honey is fantastic though. And I, I love that I ended up going with mango as this pairing because I think it's gonna go really well. So let's go ahead and try the mango version. Oh yeah, much more of that bright fruitiness. Obviously, we're talking about mangoes now. A little bit of acidity there from that. I will say my uh, my acid balance, technically, and all that fancy stuff with the traditional is a little bit lower, not very acidic, and that's okay. It's got way more of this um, honey prominence, which is more of like a honey bomb, which is kind of what I wanted. But this is like fruit juice. I'm getting like an amazing fruit juice vibe from it and it's really, really clean. I do think the combination of mangoes might have been, um, might have attributed some extra flavors there because obviously the canned mangoes, it's weird to say, um, had their own sort of ripeness or vibe to them. And then this mango nectar I used had its own essence and just straight up sugary content in there. The final gravities, I'll throw them on screen for both of these. Um, surprisingly, even after adding all the mango juice and all that stuff, uh, did not raise the total mango ABV, or excuse me, final gravity up a lot. This one's still only like 1.008, so kind of low, but not bad. Also very good. I did save and I did make enough for this one to be able to send off to some competitions. So I will plan on sending this one to some stuff. If uh, I haven't finished my video by the time I get results back, I'll have posted stuff here. So you'll see stuff on screen, how it did. Unfortunately, if I post the video before I send it off, then not gonna have those results. But also very good, acid balance is good. Mango is actually pretty dang good for what, what it is. And um, not a lot of ABV. I think the fruitiness has really kind of helped hide that ABV there. 
These are both really good. I love playing around with various kinds of honey, especially ones that are unique. Monkey, plop, monkey pod blossom is a, a unique honey for sure. So if you can pick yourself up some, um, I recommend you to do it. This is one of probably hundreds of thousands of combinations you can do with this honey. Mango is just what I ended up going with. It did pair really well together. So if you have used this honey, feel free to let me know below. Um, what did you use it with? Because it'd be fun to just kind of see. But Thank you for watching. Go ahead and hit subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And uh, we're just kind of continuing on the process. I've made a ton of these with different kinds of honeys and pairings. So if you need motivation, pretty much, not to say every honey, but a lot of honeys in the world, I've done some sort of two different recipes with it. I love getting to do that. It's a lot of fun. So yeah, that's it. That's the end of this video. If you want to go and learn how I made it, start back at the beginning. Recipes are, we're back at the beginning and before, if you want to get those cards. And I'll see you next time in the future with another video. Cheers. <laughs>